You see this? I built that with MAPS Anabolic, the first MAPS program. Very effective at building strength and muscle. Oh, and by the way, we're going to give away access for free to one of you lucky viewers right now. Here's how you can enter to win free access to MAPS Anabolic. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours. Help us with our algorithm. Help us rank on YouTube by leaving a comment. But you got to make it a good comment because then we'll pick your comment. And if we pick it, underneath we'll reply and say, you won, uh, and then you'll get free access to Maps Anabolic. But you also need to subscribe to this channel, so sign up for this channel, and turn on notifications so you know when we drop these episodes. Also, uh, there's only four days left, I believe, for our huge promotion where Maps Aesthetic and our Extreme Fitness Bundle are both 50% off. So four days left to take advantage of that. Go check them out at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just remember to use the code MAYSPECIAL for that discount. All right, enjoy this podcast. That's okay. Whoa. So getting in, getting into the uh, Montessori school is really hard right now. Listen to this stuff, dude. All right. Okay. Listening. At, at two years old, not only the Montessori school and then also airlines, the mass required oh, at two. Yeah. Two? I thought it was four. That's insane. Two yeah. years old, dude. I can't even keep. I can't even get Max to keep his fucking socks on. Yeah. Right. How yeah. am I going to get him to keep a mask on? You use glue. Impossible. Yeah. No, there's no like. You use gorilla glue. I, no, we, this is where people. You've seen clips of people like like having to leave the the airplane because of their young toddler. I didn't know it was two. Like it's crazy. You know what? You know I thought funny? it was. I thought it was a little ridiculous for four, but two is come. Okay. No, that's ins- okay. Here's how. Here's how silly that is. This is how stupid that is. Okay. Have you ever been around a bunch of two year olds? Okay. <laughs> that's the thing. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. How right. many teachers and how many students? Like how many students per teacher? Right. It's Montessori is probably less. Right. So, yeah. ten. Let's say there's ten. It's nine to one. Okay. Nine. You are the teacher. Nine two year olds. Okay. You're going to have more masks to prevent them from spreading their germs. Have you ever seen two-year-olds? Yeah. yeah. I have They're one. are going to touch each other's faces. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. I mean, what, what, what the I mean, hell's going on here? You can't control that. Yeah. What, well, are you, what are you going to do? I mean, what really sucks is that the way this all came up, what, well, first we were talking about the Montessori schools. It's a, it's just one of those feel-good policies that doesn't make any sense. But the the one that where, where this really came up that it was, so well, I got pageant. pissed about was, because it started with that conversation Katrina and I were talking about, and then we were talking about potentially going to Cabo this this summer or something. Yeah. Or, and we've also talked about maybe uh, coming out with you guys to Hawaii. And Max, in July, turns two. And Katrina's like, well, you know he's going to have to wear a mask when we go on the plane. I'm like, there's no way. Yeah. There's And my son is, like, super well-behaved. There's no way he keeps a mask on his face. Yeah. I, I mean, I... Maybe you put him in a, 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 a bubble tent. You know what I mean? That's and, a that he can't unzip the little it. bubble dome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah I've seen those. Yeah, bubble yeah, boys. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> like, like, Just like make a, sure you poke some holes in it. Yeah, yeah that's, oh, what I, that's what I've learned. That's a very important point. It is. If you don't do that, oh they'll die. God, speaking this, of that, Katrina got so mad at me. I put a paper bag over Max's head, like playing play around. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Oh my god, dude! Mama bear came out. <laughs> Like, uh, no. What are you doing? I'm like, relax. I'm playing with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're just messing around because like, yeah, it's empty his helmet. Yeah. Yeah. We She's were just, like, yeah, we were throwing ninja stars at each other, yeah. honey. He's just, he's learning how to dodge. <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do when he does it with a plastic bag over his face? And I'm like, uh, whoa. I was uh, like, relax. We're, we're just playing. We're not doing that. Yeah, makes, I'm yeah. like, yeah, she, makes good, she makes a good point, though. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that's dangerous. Yeah, it is. Not my best dad move. Yeah, so you should cut holes so his eyes and all that, he can still kind of breathe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Still kind of breathe. You know, that's the the evolved version. Yeah, yeah. Dude. I lost that argument. Let's just say, <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, not winning. Well, that's good. You know, they, they help balance us out, dude. We have ideas listen, too. Listen, uh, moms and dads. Okay, we're, we both have our thing that we're you know we're valuable for. Dads aren't necessarily the safest. What are you? So honest. are you? I mean, we promote risk. You're still so early. So I'm, uh, I feel like it, it's starting to get to this point now where the more and more of the you know how Katrina and I are different with raising a child is starting to come out right and uh, all good stuff right but it's uh, you know things that you just don't think to talk about are you have you and Jessica are you have you have you got into something not get into like a fight because like, yeah. you guys I know you guys wouldn't fight over it but I mean like we were like oh I never thought that she would be so strongly this way uh, or not really right see my point here mm. I'm trying to think right now she's definitely far more sensitive to him crying like if he cries ooh it really makes it like really triggers her that was a big one for for Katrina. me if he cries I'm like 
Okay. Yeah, here we yeah. go. Oh, he doesn't want to get. He wants to get his way. Uh-huh. Let him cry. We'll yeah, see what I, happens. I, I, but but if for her, it really it's a it's a really it really affects her. So that's one big difference. But I can't think of any. Yeah, it's early right now. They yeah. start to come out yeah. more, I think, as they get a little bit older, because that I had the same. Well, once thing they get too. their little personality and everything that you have to figure out, yeah. like how well, are you going to manage? He's this? also he's also now like now he's starting to have a preference for her or me depending on the situation. Yeah. Like I'm fun guy. Like. If he's fed and he's not tired and he sees me, he's like, yeah, it's, let's play. It's going to be a good time. He laughs and smiles and it's all good times. But when he's tired or you know hungry, he, doesn't feel he don't give up. He don't care. He's like, who is no. this guy? Let go of me. Yeah, Where's mom? Here. I want mom? The other night I went up to, because to, he was we, she put him down and then he didn't go down. So he's kind of fussing and then he starts crying. So it's like, okay, we got to restart, right? That's what you got to do. You got to go in and restart. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, let me go try, right? So I go in there and I pat him like this on his back and he's like pushes up <coughs> and you could tell he's looking up and he's like trying to figure out is this mom or dad right so then i'm like it's okay but here's my voice Rah! so then i pick him <laughs> Not up who i wanted yeah, yeah so then i pick him up to try and like sue them or whatever no way dude he's twisting he's like where's mom i need to find mom yeah as soon as she walks in the room and he hears her voice just uh, sits his head on her shoulder. I'm like, oh, shit, man. <laughs> yeah, dad's, dad's not the guy Home that comforts. Base. Yeah. yeah, he's not the one that comforts me. So. Oh, uh, the thing that we're dealing with right now, so the, this this thing that's becoming consistent, and I haven't decided how much I like it or not. So I, I have the uh, Instagram stories today, so I don't know if you guys saw so far in my oh, day, yeah. right? And uh, it's the cutest thing in the world. Like uh, every morning pretty much now before I leave, uh, Max is sleeping in the bed with Katrina and they're all, he's normally like hand on her face and they're all cuddled up. It's, mm-hmm. it's adorable. And when you see that, you might think that, oh my God, did they let the kids sleep in the bed? No, absolutely not. That doesn't happen. He sleeps incredibly well. So he goes down at 7.30. He sleeps all the way till, at the, the earliest he'll wake up is five, uh, normally six or 6.30. But when he wakes up at five or 5.30 or anything before 6.30, she will bring him into the bed. She'll mm-hmm. give him a, she'll give him a little bit of milk and she'll bring him back in the bed and he'll they'll fall asleep together. But I have to get out of the bed. So even if I don't need to get Why out Why do you have to get out of the bed? Because like you, he dad is playtime. So Oh, so he, he won't even sleep. He won't sleep. And I also shot myself in the foot by teaching like so I don't know, maybe 6 months ago um, you know, I started to like, we'd be reading his books like before bed, like we always do. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And I pretend like I'm I was sleeping, like when it's getting closer to be done with the books, I'll be like, Oh, it's time to go to sleep. And I, I, I pretend like I'm snoring <laughs> and uh, I start doing that. And so he would, you know, ah, try and wake me up. And it was just so it's this, a game. So it's a yeah. game, right? Well, when he comes in at five o'clock in the morning and I'm really snoring, <laughs> he's you know, slap you. Yeah, he comes over and he's laughing and hitting me on the head. Cause he thinks I'm playing with him. Yeah. So we, I have to get up and I have to go to the other room so they can actually continue to sleep. Yeah, I'm doing this thing yeah, where I have a problem with that. My, <laughs> my son laughs because I'll pretend to bite his leg or his hand. And then I'm like, wait a minute. This kid's going to get teeth soon. This might not be a good game to play. <laughs> yeah, he's going to reciprocate. It's fun. Oh, yeah. oh, little shit. Oh, yeah. No, that's one of those things. It's always before bed. Like I, That was something I had to learn the hard way, too. I was like hyping them up a lot. We would wrestle like before bed because they just have all this energy yeah. just spontaneously right before they have to go to sleep. And so I'm like trying to corral it. But then I'm like giving into it because it's fun. Or, yeah. you know, I'm reading a story and then I'm like pretending to be all these characters and they're chiming in and all this stuff. And then it's like, I can't do this every night because they're never going to go to bed. Yeah. You know, then they keep coming back upstairs. I'm like, I know what you're doing. You're stalling. Stop coming upstairs. Oh, yeah. And I had to like lay down the law with that. Oh, yeah. No, my they're smart with that kind of stuff. Because when they get a little older, it's like, I'm thirsty. Or, yeah. you know, hey. I'm just coming out for my water. Yeah, right, right. But, so I'm just like, get your water. But get it starts out. early. Like my, my, my baby son's seven months old, right? If he's anywhere and he wants you to get him and he makes eye contact with you, he knows to make a cute, happy face. So he'll yeah. be like, whatever. Then he'll make eye contact with you. And he's like, <laughs> he like makes this big smile. Ah. And I'm like, is he like trying to entice me? He's a closer. Come, yeah, mm-hmm. to come get him. He's a closer. I know. I, I was like, it's, already figured it's it good. Out. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. Can't uh, wait till he starts talking. Uh, apparently, I didn't get the memo here. What? Uh, Cobra Kai, Miyagi-Do over Dude, here. What's Dude, go, what's going on? Come on, bro. Did you guys? Is it, Cobra was, Kai? What the fuck? Was I there mean, like a, uh, you know, Karate Kid marathon? Listen, like, here's a bit of a split. There's a rift over here. Here's the deal, okay? Yeah. I know. This, there's the good guys. I see that. With good karate. Oh, good and guys. And then there's the bad guys. Mm, Cobra Kai. Suspect. I feel like we should fight this out Yeah. Who's Don't follow the, the. I'll get up right now. I'll the make, actual uh, rules, uh, right? I'm not yeah. Do it. I got my Johnny on. was misunderstood. I changed my. 
That's what I love so much about the Cobra Kai show. Like, he was you a really dick, get bro. into it. Like, dude, look at his background. And the thing is, like, he was doing his best. You know, and and he <laughs> just so I in the last who. fight, it's just like okay, you know, he's doing his thing, he's he's kicking his ass, uh, and, and then there's an illegal move that that he Bro, lost. Let to. me let's let's talk. You guys about this both move. actually, it's move. actually very fitting that you guys are representing like this because I do feel like yeah. you are like Daniel Son for sure. Yeah. Bro, yeah, yeah, look, yeah. look, let's and talk about this for a I, I told you guys I was a little bit borderline bully, but like you know, made my way out of it, <laughs> so I wasn't like recovering you know, total bully. dick. Yeah, yeah, no, Danny Larusso came from what did he come from? New Jersey, yeah. and uh, he learned he's karate Italian, so obviously you love him yeah. you know i yeah. mean maybe yeah. he came came in to, to california into yeah. this in this dickhead bully starts messing with him. <laughs> daniel larusso do you come in you bro, steal the guy's girlfriend he studied karate for like six months he didn't yeah, even have to change dude. grades six months yeah freaking johnny been karate his whole life and who wins the fight mm. i do believe they, so i mean that's pure they like, did so i'm I not mean, like obviously i'm not like a crazy fan like you guys sure. are about it but i do i did <laughs> enjoy all of them and i do like the new one because they do such a good yeah, job actually of telling his story right of yeah. like making him seem like not such like oh i get it that's why he was bullied and oh man didn't realize that he felt like yeah. he stole his girlfriend and, that was very smart yeah they did it it was really it was very well done very yeah. very well done yeah. the way they did that yeah, and his dad was a total jerk you yeah. know like it just it would, would just punk him all well, at the least time. he had a dad danny was there with just wow. a single mom oh speaking <laughs> <That's true. laughs> speaking of you guys being jerks what do we yeah. do? What so do we I brought date? up. I know. I know. I, I I rolled that company under the bus the other day on email. So I get another. <laughs> I get another email. Okay. So Cassie. Same company. No. 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 This is different. Oh, okay. So Cassie sends me a message and she forwards this email and she says, "What do you want? How do you want me to respond?" So Doug, do you have this email? Please tell me you have the email that Cassie has. So, you, so we get it's re, it's it's in uh, response to uh, woke fitness. Mm. Oh, our last episode. Which, by the way, I you know I kind of knew that we might ruffle some feathers, but I thought when I went back and watched it because I was I was a little concerned. I, like, I was it's surprising yeah. to me because if you listen to how we talk and communicate, I mean we've been helping people through, the, and we have incredible empathy for the whole situation. For sure. So it's weird to me that it would even. No, piss Courtney off. loved this. She actually texted me or just listened to it and was like, "Wow, that was a really well done, you know, episode." Yeah, I, I thought. So, I I thought I we had like, a good balance in it. I didn't think that. Uh, so um, I was a little surprised by this. So Doug, can you pull it up and read it for the audience here? Yeah. Oh, just turned kidding. Off. Yeah, turned off here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, turn yourself on. This, oh, this topic turned me off. No, I'm going to read from the most important parts. I listened to your latest episode, Woke Fitness, and while I wasn't intending to do cardio today, my heart spiked so much during that podcast from rage <laughs> that Whoa. I might as well have run a mile. For a podcast that has always favored nuance and deep understanding of topics, I was totally unimpressed with your lack of discussion on the following. You are attracted to what you're attracted to. Here's food for thought. You're attracted to what's sold to you. And what's so sold to us is white, skinny, athletic, cultural norms. Oh my God. <laughs> Wow. It's easy to dismiss your preference, which, as you stated, feels so personal. It's none of anyone's business. But really, your preven preference isn't your preference at all. Wow. But wow. it's what's marketed we to can't you even think for ourselves through all mainstream outlets. Mm. Calling out preference as fat phobia is not evolutionarily based, but monetarily based. <laughs> Our preferences wow. are inherently fat phobic because that's the message that's marketed. Furthermore, those in the woke space aren't absolving themselves or of their autonomy by not pointing the blame on them, but are reclaiming obesity as a systemic issue. There are so many other points that I could discuss, but now that my heart rate has recovered, I'm going to eat a post-workout meal. Mm. As a healthcare worker, healthcare worker, I've listened to your podcast regularly since the pandemic, and it had become a beloved routine of mine to get my steps in and tune in. Not anymore. Y'all are on the wrong side of history. All I ask uh, I is that, that you keep this podcast up on the app years from now so the 
that the proof remains public. Oh, it's so oh, sad that we lost wow. it. We'll <laughs> we lost. It. How about that Man, one, huh? Hi history's against. All right, so here, so yeah. here's the deal. There's a little bit of truth that in, only, yeah, that person. only, but actually, that only is true for Justin. That's Justin's type. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, the rest of us are, you know, you know. No, no. He, okay, there's a little bit of truth in, in what they're saying, in the sense that uh, media does influence what we tend to preference, but there's Absolutely. also a very strong. Uh, there's very strong evolutionary roots. The, by the way, this is well studied. So I hate this whole like the science. Is, no, that's bullshit. The, the science is actually quite clear. They've done studies on like, for example, to say you know what kind of shape are are men attracted to, and they'll do this like all over the world. And what they do find is that there is a a difference in weight. Where in some countries, uh, the, what they find pre you know preferable are 30 to 40 pounds heavier than what they might find in another country. But it's the ratio of waist to uh, hip. Yes. There's a hip to waist ratio that is the same in all of these. And that hip to waist ratio is connected to health, longevity, successful childbirth. You know what you don't find almost anywhere in any country is a general preference for severe, severe obesity. There are places where it's borderline, and I forgot where exactly, but there's a region in Africa yeah, where, where they, they, they feed everybody a lot of milk to uh, get the weight up. I, I remember seeing that as like an attractive quality, like they were looking for you know women that were a little bit bigger. Yes, but there was there was and it's borderline, and one and one of these areas is because there was such a, a huge epidemic of HIV and AIDS. So being heavy. Hmm looked healthy because yeah. you are not wasting away to, to, to this disease, yeah, right? Yeah. But by and in, in, in large, uh, there is no like evolutionary preference for severe. Actually, for, there's no evolutionary preference for anything that is generally unhealthy. So this could be uh -huh. really bad skin. This could be, you know, teeth that are falling out. This could be anything that displays poor health. Generally speak, and I say general because humans are complex. So there's definitely... Uh, you know, nuances and fetishes and all that stuff. But generally speaking, anything that dis that is a display of, of of poor health is considered unattractive. So this is terrible. It's not fat phobia. Uh, they label it that to, because then the next step is to say you are um, a bigot or discriminatory. Right. Why aren't you sleeping with yeah. these su super obese Why people? Why are you yeah, pursuing uh, you know, obese people as like your preference? Yes, it's terrible. And, and then the thing is, the whole marketing aspect of that, like that's where I'm immediately, I'm like, okay, so you're telling me that none of us can think for ourselves. We can't have our own like preferences like now. Like you're telling me a marketing company is going to influence me that much to, to where it's going to be like, oh, well, this is what I'm supposed to be yeah, attracted yeah. to in life. I mean, we've addressed- Tell me what else to do. You know, in her defense, we have addressed that too, though. I mean, we we talked about this when we talked about magazines. I mean, uh, much of the you know 80s and 90s and even probably even early 2000s, well, maybe not so 2000, but- or definitely in the 80s and 90s and maybe even before this, you know, skinny cocaine looked, you know, just totally uh, anorexic looking model was right. what we were promoted as health or what people should be attracted to. And but I don't I can't get behind that. That's uh, we've been sold that. So that's what everybody wants. Like, yeah, it's such an over the, yeah, if that was, Exactly. If that was <laughs> the case, then that, that would be like everybody oh, right now. Also, you, you got to remember this. The market is is driven by the consumer. If you stop buying that shit, they will stop promoting it. They have no way of making money off of the, what they're promoting if people don't buy it. So at the end of the, and this is the problem, nobody wants that responsibility. And by the way, mar the way marketing companies come up with stuff like that is they go survey people first and then they go after yeah, or they'll put the other out. way around. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> here you are in this, this company, this big company, corporation, and you're like, hey, I'd like to use this model to market our new product. And like, okay. And then two months later, like, it's, we're losing sales. It's not yeah. working. Is the company like, keep pushing it? We need to teach people to like this model. That's well, a terrible approach. They'd I be mean, like, you've kind it. of seen that a little bit in, in in programming for like TV shows and movies, and it's just not doing well. No. You know, like it's just, you can't, as much as you want to, to have people kind of come into your ideas and your ideologies, like yeah. if it's not, if people aren't buying it, it's not working. Yeah. And also this whole, like she had, of course, this person had to throw in not just skinny, but also white, right? Yeah, where did that come in? Okay, well, first of all, that it's it's partially true, but mainly because for a lot of long time, right? The number one, first of all, America is the largest consumer base in the world, right? Everybody knows if you want to build a company and make it extremely successful and billions of dollars, like 
you you do it in America. We're the, we we consume the most. We have the most money to consume, right? And for a long time, a majority of the consumers in America were uh, white, right? They were European centric. So you saw that. But America's landscape is changing quite a bit. And what's changing along with that is the marketing. It's not because companies are trying to be virtuous. It's because it's starting to work to show somebody that is Hispanic or that is black or that is, uh, you know, not white because the consumer base is starting to change, right? Right. Mm-hmm. That's that's why it is the way it is. Now, why is it? Why does it show off and uh, show up in the rest of the world? Because again, America is the main consumer. If you look at the amount that that consumers in America uh, spend on products, it like pale. It, 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 other countries pale in comparison. That's why it is the, the way it is. But as the consumer base changes its habits, so will the marketing. But yeah, this labeling it fat phobic, like what? I yeah. can't believe people are so dumb. I can't believe there's, I mean, I can't believe you're this. It like, hurts my head. I, you know, I'm glad we did the episode now. I was like, I was kind of like, uh, really? I mean, this is kind of obvious to me, but <laughs> obviously not. Yeah. Okay. So, so <laughs> if I'm an asshole and you're not attracted to me, does that make you asshole phobic? Yeah. Yes. You know? Exactly. But you're a jerk. You're just a phobic. You just have a phobia against jerks. Yeah. You know what I mean? You should like me. Yeah. You because... have a phobia against guys with vans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever, come on in. Yeah. You know, yeah. come in my van. You have a phobia against guys that live in their vans. Yeah, with no windows, like me. Yeah, and I got duct tape in the back. It's just, uh, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. But it's part of that whole strange, like woke uh, fitness movement. And that it's is always to grow. default to the systemic. Everything is systemic now. There's no yeah. personal responsibility. Heaven forbid, like you just own up that maybe I like that or they don't like that. It always we have to blame a system on yeah. it. Like, well, yeah. it's very, the- I'm sorry, but it's very uh, uh, parallel to cults. Like this is the first thing they do. Like everybody has to have the same ideas. Every has to, everybody has to subscribe to this type of language. Everybody has to yeah. do all these things the same. Where's the diversity? Diversity is where it's at. That's the beautiful part. We're yeah. a, we're a melting pot of a million different types of people, and that's beautiful. Yeah. Like, why why do we get away from that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, you're just okay. You're attracted to what you're attracted to, whatever. And I hate like this. Generally speaking, this isn't, of course, on, on an individual basis. This is it could be very different. But that if you're healthy, you're probably going to be more attracted. And by the way, when I say healthy, I don't just mean physical. <laughs> That's part of health. I also mean mental health and you know spiritual health, right? So somebody can be physically very attractive, but if they're mentally not healthy, uh, they're also probably not going to be attractive to a lot of people. It's just, it's just the way it is. On other news of dumb people, did you guys see Joey Swole giving out cryptocurrency oh, advice? Boy. <laughs> oh, no. I wasted, I don't know if it's even 30 seconds of my life watching oh, that. Yeah, I know, I had to tag you guys. It, is that the beginning of the end for crypto? I just, it, it was the, the best gift you've given me in a while, yeah. I'll be honest. Oh. Like, that was that was amazing to sit through. Yeah. So great. I, yeah. I, I, the way he talks about it, like, he obviously doesn't know. He's just like, yeah. I'm totally into crypto. Like it, it's like this is yeah. Everybody knows I'm in. It, it, it reminds me so like like in culture you have like certain terms like like getting jiggy with it you know yeah. like like that that was like a cool thing because Will Smith said it like once or whatever and then like your grandma said it next so like yeah get jiggy yeah, with yeah. It. like Joey Schwal just did that to crypto the shark has been jumped yes hundred yeah. percent yes. I know dude. I mean the, the thing that uh, I've now talked to several very brilliant minds uh, that. I think one of the best things that I've heard from them say is that, I mean, I don't understand it. It's, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, and this is. Are you talking about economists? Yeah, that's like, what, legit, no, yeah, like, yeah, like, no, I'm talking about. Yeah, brilliant minds in that field are like it's confusing and it doesn't. I can't quite piece it all together or make sense of how yeah, it's all. Elon going Musk to, couldn't figure it out. Yes, like, uh, but Joey Schwartz has it down. By yeah. the way, they just. I just read an article. You know how the 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 uh, the criticism that he said was that it was. Uh, you know, the carbon footprint of mining for Bitcoin because the energy, right? The energy to mine for Bitcoin. Yeah, you said you debunked that, no? They, they an article actually debunked it. They went and and compared gold and and dollars <clears throat> and the whole process, right? The process of mining the gold and transporting it and all that stuff, and then the process of like what it takes to make money and print money. And they actually compared the carbon footprint and the energy that was required to make them. And Bitcoin actually uses the least. It's actually less uh, bad for the environment than those other ones. And I knew it. When I heard that, it reminds me a lot of how, you know, oftentimes we have these environmental policies that sound and feel good, but when you actually break it down, it's not so simple. Like I remember the plastic bag ban that they had in California a while ago. 
And it was all based on the fact that plastic bags don't decompose or whatever. And so it's worse for the environment. And then people actually went, scientists actually went and studied like the amount of water that is needed to, to make paper bags, the amount of you know, materials, transporting them. They take up more space. They're heavier. They actually did all the actual yeah. math and figuring. They said, mm, it actually, it's not that big. It's not a difference. These are all the inconvenient details. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's much easier to to think like generally this will be better. But like when, that's why it's so important, you know, to follow that train of thought and see it all the way through. Well, I still stand behind that. I don't think it's going away. I know I came out the hardest probably saying that I believe it's, I don't think it's going here away. to stay. Yeah, yeah, it's here to stay just for the black market reason alone. That's it. Yeah. I mean, that's worth period. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know that for sure if it will or will not, but even the money that I put into that, I looked the same way when I put a bet on the Lakers to lose. It's the same. It's a, I'm gambling. Yeah, it's a I, gamble. It's a gamble. I'm going to throw a little bit of money at it. Let's see what happens. Yeah. I do as much research to figure out as much as I can and think, oh, I think these are decent bets. But that's it. I'm walking yeah. away from it. It's like, oh, if it turns out to be something, then great. If not, I'm not going to. Yeah, people if, got in early and they made a lot of money. Well, and good for them. Here's the truth, right? If the shit really hits the fan, right? If the shit hits the fan, you're going to want something you can use in a black market because black markets change all the time. Now, right now, it's drugs and guns and other shit. But who knows? If the shit hits the fan, maybe the black market is something like milk or bread or you know, right, right. car or... You know, who knows, right? So, and what's the odds of the shit hitting the fan? In very this small. country, too. Yeah, but very, very small. Right, right, right. But if it does hit the fan and everything goes crazy and you're like, oh my gosh. Uh, you and know. by the way, though, if a scenario like that were to happen, I don't think we're the first country to show that as an example. Mm. Right. So if you if you're like shit hits the fan, gets all crazy. Oh, it's and, happened in the past in other places. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, do you, you know, in Venezuela, yeah. Bitcoin, like people like saving their lives with Bitcoin because oh, their yeah. currency is completely destroyed. Yeah. yeah. In other countries that have gone tyrannical, uh, you know, black, there were black markets for clothes. There were black markets for education. There are books that you couldn't buy because they were banned. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to buy these books? Well, you got to use the black market. So, you know, Bitcoin is, uh, you know, it's good for that, I would say. But as far as the value, I don't know. It's so volatile. But still, look, here's the deal. It crashed. Everybody's like, it crashed. It's still so much higher than it was a couple of years ago. Like, what is it sitting at now? 30-something thousand? Yeah, yeah. Where was it a couple of years ago? Nine? Yeah. yeah. So even with its crash, holy cow, it's still, you know, way more uh, valuable than it was uh, before. Yeah. yeah. Were, weren't you going to bring up the Logan Paul? Oh, fight? yeah. Adam, so yeah. I, So did you see that he signed with uh, Showtime? Yeah. So Brendan Schaub was talking about this. What? So he, okay, by the way, which is, the, which is okay, that, that uh, what's a company called? Uh, Thrilla. Triller? Or, Trilla or some it's shit, whatever like that name yeah. of it. Yeah, remember I was bringing it up like how trashy it was. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. my God, this company is, I cannot believe. But I mean, there's so much hype around the fight. If it makes money. Well, especially with like Logan Paul and stuff like that, that are be, and Jake Paul being involved in it or whatever. So they have so much pool with their network so I'm, I'm guessing that they probably carried a lot of the success that that company was having now they sign with showtime dunzo dude so watch the fall of that company you, it's only going to be a matter of time so what's showtime going to do with them what? real boxer they will set they won't they won't set no bullshit fights his next fight his fights coming up will be real fighters heavyweight youtube contender that well, was like his title <clears throat> i'm like okay so logan paul just focusing on him because we've seen jake paul actually had a fight and he won right yeah logan paul he didn't win like where's his track record oh did you bring up logan or jake i'm sorry i brought up logan oh i was because talking about he's, he's my bad I was, about, I was i was talking about jake oh, so oh, jake's okay. the, one so the little signed. yeah the little brother who just fought on the th with thriller what the fuck yeah, is it thriller thriller I whatever i don't know the name of it sorry, isn't someone. he fighting floyd or is that the other guy? no it's logan fighting is fighting floyd, floyd. Oh my yeah. god! Didn't yeah, you? that that one just blows my mind. I was <laughs> I was trying to now, scratch. Let me ask you guys this: Do you my think head. Do you think Floyd is going to go in there to try to hurt him, or do you no. think Floyd's going to no, go in there? He to doesn't make even a fight show? that way. No, Floyd, he Floyd doesn't does not fight, fight that way. way. Hold on a second. I would love it if he okay, did. Okay, hold on a second. Yes, he doesn't fight that way, but he's one of the best boxers yeah. of all time. Yeah, but he also make no mistake. He, if he wanted and to, he did it early in his career. He's also a very very intelligent fighter, and he everybody has a fighter's chance. What do you call a punch or fighter's punch chance? What the Box, fuck? Uh, a boxer's chance or uh, no, no no puncher's uh, chance? Yeah, thank you, puncher's chance. Jesus, today I can't put things together. That's a bit deep. Some analogy. Yeah, there, you yeah. you know what I mean though, right? So he knows that, and he's a big boy. So mm -hmm. he's not going to mess around. He's not going to take risk. He's he's about his money. Yeah, but you got to understand something. Care. There's a di but when you're talking about world class boxer, 
versus a good boxer. Yeah, but you it's kn- like light years. Like okay. Floyd, although he's the, he's a he's a technical boxer, he dances or whatever, and he's not known as a hard puncher in comparison to other. Top yes, he will knock. Yes, someone's face you're off. right. But there's a big difference between 150 pounds and 210 pounds. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you can be world class or not. I mean, here's the thing. Floyd, I don't know, man. I've, Floyd, I've, Floyd May- Mayweather would, would would whoop my ass, but yeah. I guarantee I would put a licking on him if we if I got a shot on him. Well, because I'm twice his size. He's so smart, just like somebody he, else would. He's just gonna put him through the ringer until he gets him yeah, tired. That's what he'll do, and, and then he'll he'll maybe he'll go. He's one of the most know, he's one of the most elusive boxers. Yeah, of, of have all you even touch him? Have you guys ever been around a world class bo- small boxer hit a bag or anything like that? Oh uh, yeah, it's another he, it's boxer. another level of okay. Human. So I've never been. As for a Mexican box, dude, this guy hits so hard. It's, it's and insane. they're small. He's 150 pounds, yeah. but oh my, 150 pound guy. I guarantee you, he hits three times as hard as anyone in this room. Agreed, agreed, agreed. But I've so I've never been around a world class, but I've I've boxed with an amateur boxer who's so obviously way better than I am. But the weight and the size was such a difference mm-hmm. that. I actually could go a couple rounds with the guy because I could just sit there with, I mean, I no you skills. Reach, yeah. yeah. I mean, just, I, I'm leaning back. I'm keeping the, like he would have to lunge at me to get in. So mm-hmm. I, it actually looked like I hung there for now get th- by the third round. I can't breathe and I'm slobbering yeah, all over myself. Yeah. And then he's hitting me in the gut and then it's game yeah, over. He's going right? to wait till you get sloppy. Yes. So, but you're, st- and you're not Logan Paul fights. Like I'm not a fighter, right? So right. Logan Paul is an actual fighter. So he's got the puncher's Dude, chance. This is crazy. He's not going to go. He's athletic. He's, he's skilled, but like, I mean, he hasn't proven anything yet. I, I hate to say it, Adam, but you called this and uh, it's, it's happening. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're signing with Showtime and it's, it's just I'm, money. It's all money. You know, it's of like, course. It's, yeah. That's, of course it is. That's uh, everything. Like, I want to know more specific so because you you see Conor McGregor called out uh, um, Floyd Mayweather for taking the fight, claiming that th- these numbers are inflated. Mm. That they're saying that what numbers are inflated? the what the numbers that Jake and Logan oh, are from saying the last fights. Yeah, their fights that they're making all this money. Well, didn't Floyd sue them because they weren't going to pay him x amount of dollars and something like that happened? I know he did. I don't mm. know if he won. I don't know I where didn't where. Hear about that. Yeah, yeah, he sued him because um, the chain is it the change the venue? Do you know? Yeah, we talked about it. There was something. There was something that they didn't. They agreed to, and that they changed. Yeah, either the mm-hmm. date or the venue or something. I can't remember what it was, Sal. But you're you're right. He he did sue him. He sued him for like two or four million dollars, something in that range, something ridiculous. I don't know where it's at, and I don't know if that was just a posturing. Any or any boxer that goes in there to fight one of those guys, I would I would think because as a boxer, right, as a fighter, that's your skill, right? Mm-hmm. So it's it's almost like. If one of us was put into competition with like a, a fake fitness influencer, you know, personal trainer, oh, 120 million lawsuit. <laughs> whoa, what? That's, whoa, yeah, that's that's. Whoa, no, I said, what did I say? Because it, yeah. <laughs> it was supposed to be in Dubai. That, yeah, wow. see, it was location, yeah. right? Oh wow, 120 million. Yeah, that's insane. I was way off on yeah. that. I could, I thought it was way less. Dude, than speaking that. of big shit. money, Dang. did you guys see uh, Amazon bought uh, MGM? Yes, I did. Eight point four wow. billion. Yeah, dollars. It's the second biggest acquisition in like the last decade with them, right? So Whole Foods was the last really wow. big one they did. Now you know why. Is it the programming? Is it the well? I mean, uh, right. So movie, yeah, potential. There's just the competition with streaming service. It's in order for for it's all about Amazon Prime, about keeping the Amazon right. Prime customers. Uh-huh. They have to stay competitive. One of the be- best perks about having Amazon Prime is you have access to great movies. Mm-hmm. And so in order for them to stay competitive, they almost their hand is almost being forced in this direction to hang with all the Netflix, the HBO Max, Disney Plus. All I these. love it. Yeah, because you see that Netflix original just came out for the zombie movie, you know, with Dave Bautista. Is that his name? Is it good? Did you watch it? Yeah, no, it's one I keep bringing up at that. Oh, that know, was that, a dumb that, one. That, that, that was kind of stupid. Okay. But um, I did see that like Chris Pratt has a movie with Amazon that's original. And it actually looks really good. Like I saw a trailer. I, I, was I like, love oh. it. I was like, hmm, this. I, I think this is great. Now, does this mean Amazon's going to own the MGM uh, casino and hotel in Vegas too? Is that all part of the whole deal? I would assume so, right? Yeah, I mean, I would actually think it's different. I would think there's the production company, MGM. Yeah, but does MGM own it all or is it separate? Yeah, but I think they bought MGM production company. I don't know if they bought MGM as a Cause, entire cause brand. Because that would be cool. Imagine a casino owned by Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> that's lame. That does, yeah, I was going to say, that doesn't sound cool. No, no, no. I bet you would it's be like the opposite of, of cool. Jeff Bezos of running that. I don't think so. That's a good question, though, Doug. Could you see if they, if they, if they, I don't think they do, Sal, though. I would assume that MGM has got many branches to the company. Company, mm. And they're probably selling off 
the the production side, the movie making, and then they, wow. I'm sure they have other. I mean, I'm yeah. guessing. I don't. Oh, know. hey, I got some good. I guess this is a good news. I mean, it's kind of nerdy, but it's kind of cool. Did you oh, guys know sweet. that the American there's so they have these math competitions in the world, right? Where they, I guess, they figure out complex equations or whatever. Mm. And China dominates these competitions. Well, guess who just won the latest math competition? Hmm. America. Yeah. Really? Yeah, we did. Wow. USA. Yeah, we beat them. How so, long? I mean, I bet we haven't won in forever. I don't remember. I can look it up for you. But we beat them, um, and uh, it was pretty. Apparently, it was a big deal. Of course, it is. I don't. Oh, here we, we go. Ready? How long? How long has it been since? <laughs> By the way, almost. I think. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if this is true, but everybody on the American was it team, a janitor from Boston? No, That's what it wasn't. I know. It says oh, okay. U- USA math team Olympiad beats and, China for the first time. And he's in, Chinese in, in thirty years. <laughs> Is he a Chinese guy? No, it's four. It's four <laughs> kids. I don't know if they might all be Chinese, but that's the beauty of America. Yeah. We got them all, man. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. But they won. Look at that in thirty years, though. Jeez, I don't know that they kicked our ass for that freaking wow. long. Wow. Speaking so of, we got basketball still. Speaking of smart, yeah, still got basketball. <laughs> yeah, we do. That's right. <laughs> speaking of smart stuff, uh, there was this kid. Did you guys hear about this? This the first uh, like toddler to be admitted into what's it called? What's that? organization, Doug, where your IQ needs to be super high. Mensa. Mensa. Oh, Mensa. Yes. Yeah. There was a two-year-old that got in. I'm going to look it up because I, I forgot to save uh, in uh, this article. Two-year-old that got admitted into Mensa, the youngest member of Mensa. This two-year-old scored a 146 IQ test. Whoa. A what? two-year-old? A two-year-old. How is that even possible, dude? You hear well, that? You hear that, honey? Well, even better than Doogie Howser. Yeah, we're behind. What the fuck? That's, no, I've been saying that's been the debate at home right no, now. No, no. Is it really? <laughs> yeah, but when I brought it at the beginning of the show, that was one of the things that we didn't get to that. But L- that's listen to this. That About 17 uh, months old, she had recognized the, alf- the whole alphabet, numbers, colors, and shapes. Wow. She could say all the states just by the shape of the of the of the state. She could tell you all the all the. Wow, a two I mean, year old? a two year old. She knows she uh, she speaks over fifty signs in sign language. Can count to just a, a two year old. So be like a virtuoso, like like piano player. Yeah, or can something. I, can identify elements on the periodic table. Like it's really, and she's two, dude, two years old. Now, so in order to get to a two-year-old, sense. there, I mean, you got to think they couldn't even start until at least six months, like actually teaching anything. The baby can barely see anything at that point. I know. So literally, and she's adorable. Every, every, it's every all just modeling, like, like have to, yeah, have, have like, to. She just like, picks up on everything. Every that's around every her. waking moment, they had to been like well, trying you to gotta, teach. You, this is what yeah. we need to realize, and this is the trippy thing, right? There's, we know this. Very, this is very easy to see, but there's there's these genetic. Uh, obviously, most people are in the middle, right? So if you look at like the ends of the spectrum, so on one end is like, you know, really, really bad. On the other that's end right is there. like exceptional. I think that's her. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and then most people are somewhere in the middle, right? So if you think of it physically, right? On the on the very, very end of the spectrum are people who are like over seven feet tall, super, super rare, or like these physical anom- anomalies that are super strong. They don't work out. They can just bench press 300 pounds. It's like that with intelligence too. That might even be more extreme. So like more, so... There's people on such a far end of the spectrum that we probably sound like children, yeah. you know, when we talk about certain things. And this kid, two years old. Well, just it, imagine what, what she's going to grow up to become. You know, oh. who knows? Well, who knows? <laughs> this you know, is where, funny. like, the government start kind of pulling them in, right? tortured, too. Well, you know what's oh, funny? Oftentimes, yeah. these, these genius kids yeah. don't do much. Tortured, man. They, yeah. they don't. They, right. they end up going to school. They don't connect with other kids. They feel very, you know, and they end up doing okay. But oftentimes they don't do anything great because it was such a challenge for them to to learn or yeah, whatever. Just be, it would be interesting to see where her passion's going to take her. Yeah. What was that one? Little, boy, she's adorable, huh? She's so yeah. cute. Wow. What was that? Can you imagine you have a little genius kid? I mean, I would part, part of me would be so proud. I'd be so stressed out. And part of me would be so yeah, stressed. Yeah, just like trying to protect like, you know, anybody around her. Yeah. Know? Like, or you they're like 10 and you're like, yeah. hey, you want to play with blocks? Like, no, no, thanks, father. Let's, yeah. I'd like to do these equations. Can you do these with me? Like, yeah. Sorry, kid. You're going to solve everything. Now, yeah. obviously, now, obviously, uh, there's a big portion that's genetic here, but I also wonder how how much effort like mom and dad put into like teaching. Well, I think you probably sure, recognize your child's gift, and you when you're that, you know. Here's the deal: you're not going to know all the stuff as a, as a two year old unless you want to. It's mm-hmm. not like you can force your kid. Right. At two years old, they probably they love it. You know, more mom, more dad, teach me more. You know, yeah, they're yeah. probably super like those little kids that are like athletic phenoms. I had a client once who's 
whose two and three year old was like, yeah. I couldn't believe the stuff this kid could do with like a racket in a, in a baseball bat. And I'm like, are you guys like just making a prize? Oh, and they're like, no, he literally cries if we don't. I, I do also, there's like, levels, man. Uh, yeah. And I also, but I also think there's a lot to, I mean, hopefully, I, I bet you these parents, you got to give them credit too, right? So you recognize that, but you also have to still get them to do that and teach that, which takes some creativity, right? So this is the conversation like Katrina and I are having, like there's this like little debate at home right now that, and I'm like, cause he's my son in the last, I would say two or three months as showing signs of like wanting to learn, Mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that he doesn't get distracted. It doesn't mean that he gets bored sometimes and he doesn't want to do it. And so it, it, it takes an effort from me to like, or her or the nanny to like consciously like keeping him focused and engaged and making a game out of it to do that. And that I was complaining. I was telling her like, I I like, I don't like that. The nanny doesn't do enough of this. Like she just takes the easy stuff. Of course he wants to go play in the sand and dig, you know, dig holes all Mm -hmm. day long. But I've now got him to where he's recognizing all the animals and the colors and he could put the puzzle pieces together. And so, but I also have to like, get him over to do it. Like, Max, go get your book. Let's do this. And then as he gets distracted, re-engage him with being with my voice and making fun. Yeah. And so, you know, there's definitely got to be something here with the the parents too. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they're teachers themselves or they also, they, they made a real serious effort mm. to accelerate a kid that far by yeah. two years old. I mean, you can't think that's yeah. all genetic, yeah, right? Now, speaking of distractions, you're just, just your face just keeps distracting me. <laughs> I don't understand how, like, how much Caldera stuff are you it's using? It's the, hey, so I'm I'm loving the uh, the moisturizer. Is that what is it? Moisturizer? Is that what it is, Doug? Because Doug, yeah. you're using it too, right? Yes. You have to say it like this. It's like a face M- wash first, right? And then it moisturizes. So you have I have both. It's a two part. Are you using yeah, both? Yeah, because I, mm-hmm. I just started using that. So myself. I keep the. Damn, I, dude. I, I do the. I, I do the board. one in the shower. So I keep it in the shower. The and it's and, only for your face, though, in the shower. Yeah, well, yeah. That's or all do you put it on that's your arm? All I'm, I'm okay. using no, it face only. Yeah, just okay. face. I just use it on my face. All but up here. I imagine if Not it's good here. for your face, it's probably good everywhere <laughs> yeah. else. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, young. I put the 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 moisturizer on afterwards. <laughs> so young so I, you like it, Doug? <laughs> I love it. So do I. Yeah, I think a lot of moisturizers or creams, for one, they have a really strong odor that I don't like. And then the other thing is that they're greasy. And this is not. It just like just goes right into the skin. So, mm. well, I mean, I mean, I mean. Here's the deal. We record our podcast. I'm not bullshitting. Go and watch our podcast from months ago to now, and look mm. at the difference. My yeah. handsome level. Yeah, it's mm. like well, you, it's, it's always, like your it's like your haircut level, right? Oh yeah. my God, about the same thing. So I turn my head like uh-huh. skin. Uh-huh. I turn my head like uh-huh. this. Uh-huh. Emanates. Sp- speaking of Caldera, did I, I know you just? Uh, oh, I was with uh, Max. Actually, he just dropped my interview, so uh, I went down there to visit him, and uh, he, he's also working with Caldera. Also, I, and by the way, I noticed also a handsome man. He is mm-hmm. very handsome. Mm-hmm. He didn't tell me. I made a comment. I, we were on the podcast. I'm like, dude, you're like, you keep looking younger. Like, what the hell's going on? Uh, and he's like, oh, I'm using this product or whatever. I'm like, shut up, dude. We work with them too. Yeah, yeah. So it was like this, you know, this funny moment. Actually, that was, and he he actually put that in his podcast because he's sponsored by them. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. it's like, I'm glad you brought that up because it's like we could talk. Now about you, this. you you did uh, Max. I know Jen Cohen. I know that by the way, we went on Entrepreneur Magazine post that. Right? Yeah, five so, million. So five million. Yeah. yeah. So oh, Jen, cool. Jen Cohen, uh, that uh, interview went up, and then Max's also just went up. Now you've done so many of these so far i mean the, obviously you're on your book tour yeah. right now any favorites like as far as like you felt like you know you know when you hit it right like when you get in like the flow of like communicating whatever it is you're talking yeah. about like when what are some of your favorites you've done so you far? know i like um you know i like talking to jen a lot because jen is very genuine with the questions she, like these are things that she wants to know and so she's easy to, to talk to she's relatable that's uh, what yeah her name's short for yes exactly yeah max um of course max is just he's just uh, a great easy person to talk to he's a he's a natural media person like max you see him on camera yeah you hear him on a podcast he's very polished so that was you know also a lot of fun i also did um our friend scott's uh what is it iron sights podcast and I thought I had a great. Now he's a trainer, right? Yeah. So we had a, a like a night, a good conversation that you would have between personal trainers. Yeah. So I enjoyed that. Well, one too. now you're saying things that you enjoy, but what? Which one do you think was your best representation of the book? Right. You right. you're you're selling the book, obviously. On I think so far, Max and Jen. I think I, I was able to really communicate it very well. Yeah. I would say those are two probably pretty close. You had another one I listened to. I thought was really good. That it was a while back. It was like a month ago. I can't remember who it mm. was that I thought you did really good. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate that. No, it's it's look. I've been talking about this for all of us. I've been talking about the same stuff for so long Mm -hmm. that you just, you get very, uh, it becomes automatic. It becomes very polished, right? Because you practice it uh, so often and think that's, and that's what I'm doing when I'm talking about 
resistance training and its benefits and, and all that stuff. Hey, real quick before we get to the, the questions. I know mm. you love it when we talk about UFOs, uh, Adam. Oh, God. But, dude, there's yeah, more. It's not UFOs, bro. You it gotta keeps fix happening. It. Bro, you there's guys, more stuff. You guys sound behind times here. Come on. We're okay. just trying to keep up. Listen to this. really what this is about. This, just came, this is more shit that really, I, I swear to God, Justin, yeah. they're preparing us. I know. For the big drop. Yeah. They're going to drop some crazy shit, and they're testing us. Check this out, bro. Okay. The U.S. Navy now has released this, that they detected unexplainable, mysterious objects moving at hundreds of knots under the water. What? So these are called USOs. I think we yeah, said that USOs, last time. Right. Unidentified submerged objects. So the Navy's like, uh, we actually have picked this up on our sensors and shit of things moving sonar data. Okay, Going hundreds of knots underwater. Okay, break down knots. How so, fast is a knot? I have no idea. Hmm. <laughs> Actually, I know the origin of knots. Somebody explained it to me one time, and I was just like, okay, I'm, I, I, I'm never going to be able to recite that, but yeah. It's I get not it a now. basic thing. Like I know what the origin. No, I know no. what the origins are. There is, a, there is a speed. Doug will find it, but I know what the origin is. What's the origin? They would tie knots on a rope a certain distance, and mm. then they would travel, and it's how many of these knots that would pass through a particular like measuring, like, like how many p knots pass through this ring would tell us that we're going this many knots fast. And I forgot what it was. So what is one knot? Oh, it's, it's almost a mi one mile an hour, right? So 1.1 miles an hour is one knot. Maybe look up the origin of knots too, because that'll be cool. So think about this way. Hundreds of miles an hour underwater. Do you know what that, how impossible that is? Yeah. Do you know how insane that is? Yeah, you underwater? Just blazing it's like a, through it's all like that. A, it's like a speed resistance. boat underwater. Yeah. Is there, we don't have anything that does that fast, no. right? No. Of course yeah, not. No. Submarines don't go quick. Uh-uh. They're, no. they're slow. Even the they? James Bond stuff we've seen, like it wouldn't be able to pull that Bro, off. Bro, so look at this, right? So the term knot dates from the 17th century when sailors measured the speed of their ship by using a device called a common log. The device was a coil of rope with uniformly spaced knots attached to a piece of wood shaped like a slice of pie. So however many knots passed would tell them however, you know, whatever speed was. Doug, look up the fastest underwater uh, submarine and let's see how many knots. Well, if it can create its own gravity and have that sort of separation, like then there's no friction. So of course it goes as fast as it wants. Yeah. Well, I, exactly. Like no way it's passing through water, but rather it's probably creating a bubble of space. That so it's a traveling. better thing, I right. would, I would, what's the fastest? Like 44 knots, bro. That's the uh, fastest submarine that we have. Hundreds of knots. Now, is that is this yeah. a dumb question too? Is that faster than any dolphin or any animal? Yeah. Is yeah. is like what's the fastest? I would assume. Yeah, what's Again, the, what's the I'm fastest dolphin? I would, the fastest. Do, is do, dolphins probably the fastest, right? Was there anything faster than a dolphin underwater? Yeah, mm. I think a uh, what's the fit the, the the fish with the long was a uh, swordfish? Oh yeah, they I know fast. tuna. Yeah, I think tuna might actually be faster than dolphins. Really, bluefin mm. tuna? You ever seen those fuckers? They're yeah. made for speed. Yeah, dude. Doug, tell me the fastest oh, fish. Yeah, yeah. sixty eight miles per hour. Wow. Oh, so a fish can go faster than our fastest submarine. Wow, that's okay. actually pretty a good. Sailfish. A sailfish. Oh, a sailfish. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So this is the big trophy one. Look up how fast a bluefin tuna is and then a, and then a dolphin. <laughs> Get your right, fingers right moving over there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, keep, keep going to work. Today is fish the, trivia. Google. Yeah, yeah. You guys ever seen a, like, a, like an actual tuna up close? You, uh, the, they're all muscle and they're made for speed. They look yeah. like, like torpedoes uh, the way they move. Oh, yeah. Not so impressive. Oh, that's oh, not four knots. Yeah, you're way off. So. Wow, no, that's, that's pretty ter fa terrible example. Come on, bro. Wait, hold on. Compared Capable to of 60. no, no. Hold on a second. Capable of burst speeds of twenty knots. That's pretty freaking good. Okay. Twenty know. miles an hour okay. underwater. Look yeah. up a uh, dolphin. I could probably now. do that. Let's see who's faster: dolphin or bluefin tuna. My yeah. money's on dolphin. What about you, Justin? Uh, I mean, sorry, tuna. Tuna. Yeah, I, I think dolphin's faster. I'll go. I'll go tuna. Mm, nope. Uh, Looks like it's the bluefin. The they could it? speed. They could reach speeds up to. Nine knots. Mm. So, no. Not, not even close. close. Wow. No. The bluefin tuna gets away. Wins. Yep. That's fast, dude. I know it's that fast. Now, that's crazy, though. So, you said a few hundred yeah. knots? So, so here's the thing. So, do you think that we just haven't been getting this information forever, and then all of a sudden, now, they're Correct. just like, oh, it's open, and so we'll yes. tell you all these unique experiences that we've you know, not cataloged, or, or we give it, and then it becomes like classified? I, I think so. What if it was a missile? You can't go that fast underwater. A missile can't go that fast? Underwater? Yeah. Tor torpedo. There ain't no torpedo that goes hundreds of knots uh, uh, underwater. Really? What's fastest torpedo, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> 
I, really? Do you know Doug's what that got would, finger fatigue. By the I, way, do you know I, what that would do I underwater no, no, if, if, no if a torpedo went hundreds of miles an hour underwater? It what? would create like this crazy wave. Yeah, or turbulence or whatever. Yeah, and so that's the other thing. So it wasn't creating like no. Like, okay. No. So this is again back to the whole thing that's yeah. like frictionless. Okay, there is a rocket powered super cavitating torpedo that can go up to 200 knots. Ah, that's fast, Whoa. but not as fast. You not said a few fast. hundred knots. Few is like three or 400. Uh, yeah. See, it was probably a torpedo. Mm. Yeah. They no, would have known yeah. if it was, or, it was actually torpedo. unidentified. Well, it was not theirs. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody did they didn't good, identify. That's it a good is, point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, a, it's not identified because it's not ours. You know, somebody else's torpedo <laughs> fired underwater. It identifies as a USO. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. That's honey. That's uh, where's I, I, this headband? Who's this headband? I don't know. It looks like it's an identified, <laughs> unidentified yeah. headband. Yeah, so who knows uh, who's it? It might be alien. I have no yeah. idea. Now, with all this nautical talk, I want to do a shout out ah. to the Naval Diving and Salvage Training Command. In Panama City Beach, Florida. Yeah. Oh. Whoop, whoop. Thank you so much. TC. Hold on a second. Navy Naval Diving and Salvage Training. I bet they find a lot of cocaine floating off of uh, <laughs> off of Florida. <laughs> what that, what that, that's like them. the hub of like floating cocaine. Yeah. Like, right. That's where they find it. Every time <laughs> was, I ever read about that, yeah. there's bricks of stuff. Yeah. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this podcast. Real quick, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Go check out all the free stuff that you can get. There's a lot of free stuff that we're giving away only at mindpumpfree. Dot com. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from Omar Martinez08. Can you guys go over nootropics and your personal experiences with them? You've probably had the most, Sal, right? Yeah. I, and he's tried them all. Well, I've For, given you guys a bunch too. Yeah, no, I've tried a lot. And yeah. honestly, consistently, nothing beats pure for me yeah oh i mean yeah. I, the way i feel from that it's my favorite the other ones hit and miss might get a headache might feel a spike then come down mm -hmm. i like i have I not th i think like because they use like artificial ingredients i think yeah some of the ones that i've had before like i think yeah i mean okay to be clear um just like this is like when people ask us fitness questions what's the best supplement for yeah it? whatever nothing's going to come close to good diet, good sleep, you know, stress. sleep, by the way, is huge. Like whenever I would have clients who had issues with cognitive performance, uh, nine out of 10 times, it was either they weren't getting enough sleep or they had crappy sleep. Or even like over consuming like carbohydrates, like being just overloaded with calories. Right. Or diet or whatever. Yeah. It makes a huge difference. And they show that exercise makes a big difference with cognitive performance, especially resistance training. In fact, uh, there was a study done out of Sydney, Australia that showed that Resistance training is the only form of exercise that seems to prevent or halt the progression of dementia or Alzheimer's, um, probably because it increases insulin sensitivity. And, and, and that's part of maybe they think one of the reasons why our cognitive function declines is our, our ability to utilize insulin uh, starts to get you know poor or whatever. Mm -hmm. So those things are the most effective. But okay, as far as supplements are concerned, uh, creatine has been shown to boost uh, cognitive function. Right. Then you have the class of drugs called racetems. Yes. These are these, and these are these are actual synthetic. These are the ones I don't like. That's the synthetic was the word. I was yeah, there's like paracet paracetam, aniracetam, and there's lots of others. Mm -hmm. And I've tried them, and what they seem to do for me is almost give me like a stimulatory effect. Don't know if I get a cognitive boost. Like I feel like you know I could definitely take things that'll increase my wakefulness. Like caffeine will do that. Mm -hmm. But does that mean I'm actually thinking sharper than I would if I was already kind of awake? Does that make sense? So mm. it, it makes me think sharper mainly because I'm not feeling as tired. But let's say I wasn't tired, everything was fine. Would it improve my cognitive performance? And studies show that no. Like, for example, Adderall, right? They do studies on Adderall and people report that they feel smarter, but they actually do tests and they find you don't. Mm -hmm. You just like you what you're doing you, more. You're smarter. Yeah, you think you're smarter. <laughs> yeah. um, so I don't know. It's very interesting. But the one that seems to be the most consistent, I'm with you, is the pure. Um, all the race attempts, they make me, they can make me feel kind of crappy sometimes, or yeah, when I get I, headaches from that, or class. when I come down, mm -hmm. I don't feel good. Yeah. Um, pure is one that I take regularly. We take it before we podcast. And now, is that because the reason why we probably feel that way is because everything in it's all natural? Is that what it is? That natural. It's not super hyper strong. Um, it's got lion's mane in there. It's got some other compounds in there that help. It's also got some gut health. Uh, yeah. And you it's know, actually a nice compliment to caffeine, which obviously you guys know I'm pretty much addicted to. But um, it, it's one of those things like I can 
I can get, I feel sharper and, and it, it really is uh, the, like the effect of it is only when I'm super consistent with it. So it'll take like a few times and then like, I feel like it really starts to uh, kick in like maybe the fifth or sixth time that I'm like using it. And then I'm like, you know, on fire. Yeah. Another thing, another thing that seems to help some people is to do a ketogenic diet. So some people will report that when their body is running on ketones, that they feel sharper or they're able to think faster. Mm -hmm. I'm like that. So you guys know that I do, I go on a ketogenic diet, you know, maybe twice a year and I do it specifically for that. I'll go on it because I want to, I want to get those, those mental benefits. I don't like the performance benefits. I tend to lose strength on them or whatever. But when I, when I do do it, I do notice that I get uh, a little sharper in the way I think. I, I, mean, I notice the same thing, but I, I actually don't have to be on the keto diet. You can just fast. Mm -hmm. So I feel the same benefits by it. Sure. So there's something that like if I have to do a lot of times when I have an interview, like on another show in the morning or whatever, I will fast. Yeah. I stay fasted and I just, I feel way, way sharper than if I were to go eat like a 600 calorie. Yeah. Breakfast. This is a, this is a booming uh, segment of the supplement oh, yeah, industry. Yeah. I remember when we first so started the money. podcast, how I would bring it up and it was kind of this new thing. Yeah. I remember how we would speculate and I'd be like, you know, I bet you this is going to be a yeah. huge part of the supplement industry. Where did it, it start? Because I feel like it, it was, was it was in Navy uh, SEALs. Yeah, right? Navy SEALs are like, yeah, like fighter pilots. Like I feel like that was like Do you know Sal? promoted. Well, they would take first. uh drugs. So they would take amphetamines or modafinil. Yeah, modafinil was that's a big the fighter one. pilots. But yeah. there's yes. I thought that the SEALs were the ones that were using racetim and all those and I don't know. Like, I know that their think, yeah. their prescription in Russia, I believe in Europe uh, uh, as well. Um, um, but they're mixed because I've given all... Okay, so here's the deal. And the audience knows this. We've talked about this. I love experimenting with supplements and I love experimenting with you guys with supplements. <laughs> oftentimes, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm going to see what happens to Adam. Yeah, oftentimes I'll, I'll get, we'll get something sent to us and then I'll hand... And you guys trust me, which is wonderful. Um, I'll, I'll just say, hey, try this. Yeah. We're losing that so trust, far. by the way. Yeah. I, well, <laughs> come on. <laughs> a few misses. At least 70% of the time, it's all good. Because uh, okay. that 30%... I'll give you 70%. So Doug, could you Google Magic the origin of that? Uh, what... what like or, nootropics? Yeah, origin of nootropics. Yeah, I think even the term nootropic was, uh, mm. I believe, was a new one. I think yeah. they, they, they came out with that, like, not even that many decades ago. What was it ago. before? There wasn't one. There wasn't a term nootropic. Oh. Uh, yeah, so I think it's it was like maybe in the 70s or 60s. I, I might be wrong. Let's see if Doug finds it. Oh, there we go, 1972. 70. Isn't that weird how I remember weird shit like that? Mm -hmm. You could literally ask me, uh, like, where yeah, we- 1972. Where we keep the teaspoons in my house, and I'll be like, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Jessica gets That's so how I am with commercial jingles, so whatever. Yeah. yeah. But um, but yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an exploding segment of the supplement industry, and I predict it to continue to explode, especially as- the aging population continues to become more interested in taking supplements. And as we start to, uh, you know, idolize people in tech, like, you know, 30 years ago, really smart people were not idolized today. Like that's because tech is running the world. Now it's like this big thing. And so everybody's interested in making themselves smarter or whatever. So it's this exploding segment, but yeah, so far consistently from what I've given you guys, mm -hmm. Some stuff gives you headaches. Some stuff makes you crash. I remember one time I gave Adam something, and then an hour later he's like, he was done. He had to go yeah, home or it whatever. Was awful. Yeah, but uh, but but the pure consistently is it, is is biohacking still a thing? I haven't. Of course, I, I haven't seen like you know how it was. It was pretty much in a lot of magazines. It was it oh, was like still, the, the thing. So it's still going strong. Oh hell yeah. Okay hell yeah. Is, I haven't seen much from it. Is does psilocybin fall under this category? Would it be considered? You know what's funny? Microdosing. Yeah, probably. microdosing. I, they haven't put them in that nootropic category, but they are finding that people get like positive mood effects from some of the stuff. Uh, and this is anecdotal. There's not a lot of studies yet to support it. Um, and it's kind of getting popular here in, in Silicon Valley. In fact, there was a guy that was fired recently. It's CEO. very popular. It's stealing fire. The whole book is all about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. There was mm -hmm. a CEO literally who got fired for microdosing uh, oh, LSD. I what? I Maybe that. Doug can How'd pull you it not up. Bring that up. I forgot. But Doug, was it look recent? Up, look up CEO fired for microdosing, and it should come up. Oh wow! And it was a tech CEO here, huh? I think he was here in the wow. Bay Area. How did how did no one bring this up? I, I That's interesting. Know. Yeah, I don't and know. it was was it relatively recent or what? Yes, it was not that. It was uh, so. Who is it, Doug? Does it say? Yeah, Justin Zhu of Iterable Inc. dismissed as CEO mm, because he microdosed LSD at work. Mm -hmm. Wow, he told everybody. You yeah, you yeah. yeah. Wait, I was gonna say it's like one of those things. First rule, Fight Club, dude. dude. It's like yeah. that time. Is that, that like the early days, Adam, when we uh, we yeah. did that <laughs> yeah. podcast yeah. Yeah. and we 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 thought we were microdosing. <laughs> 
<laughs> Whoops. It was a me- it was more of a macro dose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was not a good idea. No, good sure. times. Wow, that's crazy. Next question is from Zilkus Chris. How can I quit my sugar di- addiction once and for all? I have yo-yo eaten and have quit sugar my entire 32-year-old life. This one, Adam, I think this is your deal. Yeah, you know, uh, this was actually something that I actually really liked the ketogenic diet for, or at least what I learned from it or got from it, right? So even though I don't follow a ketogenic diet, um, before that, I was a, like a carb junkie, right? I was I was eating 400 to 600 grams of carbs every single day, and I, I love sugar, um, and I crave sugar all the time. And so it's, it's a constant battle. And I was always looking for things like hacks to like, you know, the rice cakes with cocoa whip and things like that to like, mm-hmm. you know, satisfy that craving uh, versus trying to find ways to like, you know, suppress it. And when I went on the ketogenic diet, um, I noticed that. I noticed that it dramatically went down, like almost completely gone. And that was one of my favorite things about running it. Now, I don't think there's anything magical about the ketogenic diet so much as I think that when you run a higher fat, higher type of protein, either one or both type of a diet opposed and a lower carbohydrate diet, I think it totally makes a huge difference. So, you know, I've completely changed my macro profile now. Like I, somebody who was consistently eating 400 to 600 grams of carbohydrates, now I'm like 200. So it's nowhere near that. And I don't have those cravings. Like I can't even tell you the last time I had candy. I'm sure I brought it up the last time I had candy on the show. I don't even eat it that often where it was like a constant battle and struggle for me. And same thing like with the ice cream. Yeah, anecdotally speaking, I don't know if there's any uh, research to support this, but anecdotally, sugar is one of those things that if you have it, you want more of yes. it. Yes. And if you don't have it, uh, at least in- initially you probably want it, right? So if you cut it out, you're going to have kind of this uh, these cravings that might last a week or two. Mm-hmm. Then at some point, it's like you don't want it anymore. And, and, and this I've noticed with myself. I've noticed with countless clients. And so the strategy to have a little bit of sugar in your diet – Seems to not work for people who have who say that they have a sugar addiction. That's me. Like it's it's all or nothing. It's like yes. I, I cannot do the like Katrina has. She doesn't have a sugar addiction, so she can have a little bit. She can it. buy a, a, a freaking you know chocolate bar and put it in the freezer and have a square of it for the next two months. You know, and it not be like that. I do not have that. If I have one square, and even if I tell myself I'm just gonna have one, I'll eat that one square, and then I'm thinking about that chocolate it kicks bar. Kicks you into gear, yeah. yeah, for the next couple of days. Like literally, like an addict. I totally feel like an addict when it comes to sugar, and I, of course, I know why because of how I ate it when I was growing up, all the way even through my 20s. So for me, one of the best things to kick the sugar addiction was running a higher fat or higher protein type of diet and a lower carbohydrate. Doesn't mean you have to be all like, you don't have to be ketogenic to where you're no carbohydrates, but stick to low. And then the the carbs that I do intake are like low glycemic stuff like yams and sweet potatoes, quinoa, like those type of carbohydrates, maybe rice, like those types of carbohydrates. And if if any that I have in the diet and then predominantly uh, protein and fat. Next question is from Hades Gray. What exercise should we and shouldn't we do when we are doing low reps? Okay, so technically, uh, any exercise can be done with low reps, but some exercises just lend themselves better to low reps and others, Mm -hmm. not so much. Typically, generally speaking, it's the single joint isolation exercises that tend to not be so, you know, done so well with low reps. And it's the compound lifts Mm -hmm. that tend to work better with low reps. Now, why is that? Well, when you're doing a single joint exercise, like a a side lateral, let's use that as an example, right? That's for the shoulders, right? When I'm doing low rep, when I'm doing, first of all, when I'm doing that exercise, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to really isolate the lateral head of my shoulder. I'm trying to really feel it in my shoulder. If I wanted to, I could lift more weight by utilizing the muscles of my upper back and my traps and momentum. momentum. Yeah, right. And so it just becomes so- that takes away from the intent. Yes, and it it becomes like such a a struggle to do like four heavy reps of side laterals and not turn it into- you know, an yeah. upper back exercise. It's just very, very difficult. Mm-hmm. Now with squats or deadlifts or bench press, um, it's much easier to maintain good form and go low reps. But those isolation exercises, they can be a bit tough with the low reps. So I, it's okay to do lower reps typically with the isolation stuff, but I don't like to go below like eight reps 
with that kind of stuff because I've just found even with myself, yeah. my form starts to go off. Well, that's the, the biggest things. thing for me, and I've seen this in the gym and the side lateral is a great example of when you see somebody like that and they add a little English to it, it's like now they're getting uh, you know, this momentum that they're kind of thrusting their hips into it, you know, they're they're leaning back with their shoulders, uh, you know, they're incorporating their upper back muscles, they're just a lot more things have to happen to move that heavier weight up versus like really just honing in and and, and and doing what your your intention is to really try to to activate more specifically, you know, your deltoids in this. Now we've answered this question several times on the show over the last you know five six years, and every time we do, we always get somebody who messages somewhere, you know, and tries to argue or debate it. Or you know, here's the thing: this question's presented in shouldn't and should, and it's not it's not a shouldn't and should. It's not I've, black or white. Exactly, it's not black or white, and nobody in here is saying that. I've never done three reps of bicep curls. So yes, I have done three reps of bicep curls before. It's just it, they don't lend themselves well to your mm -hmm. point. So I just want to make that clear because I know we'll get some knucklehead that will find that will feel the need to def defend low reps on a lateral raise or low reps on a bicep curl and say it's you know been the best thing for them or whatever. It's just it's not ideal. It doesn't mean you can't do it, and there's not some value to it. Um, because I, I I definitely uh, I did this not that long ago where. I uh, grabbed really heavy weight uh, and did three reps of bicep curls, really slow and controlled. So, but but also the tempo of it. So I was not using English on it. I was still was trying to control mm -hmm. and have good form. It was just I couldn't get more than three reps out of it. So it doesn't mean that it's it's worthless. It doesn't mean that you can't do it. And we just always come from a, a trainer's perspective. And when I think of we know what tends to happen. That's right. And yeah. when I think of ninety nine percent of my clientele, you're right. I would never do heavy lateral raises. I would never do concentration curls that where we would do less than six reps. So for the majority. Yeah, we're not speaking to the exceptions. Yes. We're trying to give information that like most people will benefit from. Yes. Next question is from Pat Nori. What are things each of you preach but struggle to practice yourself? Oh, you know what's funny? Everything. Uh, it, <laughs> no, that's true. It's one hundred percent true. It's uh, it's easy to communicate, um, and and this is the key, and this is important. I think, and I'm talking to trainers right now. You, you got to be real and don't feel like you need to be perfect in order to be a trainer. Now, what I mean by that is it's okay to, to continually seek to be the example for your clients. But don't be afraid to communicate them to them your the realness of what it's like to mm -hmm. eat healthy and get good sleep and exercise consistently because they'll connect better with you. But the truth is, nothing we talk about on the show is easy. Now we have ways of be, of, of creating discipline around them. We have ways of uh, you know making ourselves more consistent. There are things that I definitely struggle with more. Than others, so I'll give you an example of one that I preach, but I'm terrible at in terms of practice, and that's supplement use. I talk all we always talk about all the time about how supplements aren't the answer, and you don't need to take a million different things. And yet, I walk around with a bag <laughs> full of supplements. <laughs> I come to work every single day with a bag of supplements. I go in the back and I try different things all the time. I know uh, this is uh, you know something that I have a challenge with. I'm way better than I used to be to give myself a little credit, but I'm way far away from. Yeah. You know what's ideal, but I mean, none of this stuff uh, is easy. In fact, that's probably what makes uh, a trainer a better trainer. Is mm -hmm. in fact, if I were to talk to somebody about the struggles of supplement addiction, I would probably communicate it better than somebody who never had a struggle with it at mm -hmm. all, because I, I I get it. I know what that's all you know what that what it's all about. But it's all hard, man. To maintain a fit and healthy lifestyle requires more discipline and is more challenging than to live in some respects than to live a life of you know, not exercising and eating whatever you want. Of course, that's reality is it's more challenging in many other ways as your health declines and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but that's also part of the reason why it's meaningful. Uh, if this was easy, I don't think it would. we would value it nearly as much. Yeah, I know personally, like I, I am pretty consistent about what I'm doing with myself in terms of like training and lifting weights and, um, you know, in terms of like stuff that uh, I have that athlete mentality that's still there. Uh, but with that comes the struggle of, of the nutrition side, which has always been one of those things that. I knew even getting into personal training, I'm like, oh man, I got to figure this out now. You know, like before it was like I was doing enough movement and everything was working enough to where I was that typical stereotypical athlete where I would just kind of eat to fuel my needs. And it didn't really matter where the source was coming from. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've built and 
all these bad habits like leading into that, uh, which I didn't really address because I, my body was, you know, I had muscles, I had the definition, I had all that stuff, but it was just because of the insane amount of activity I was, uh, you know, a part of. And so, uh, to, to really nail that in, it was a big struggle and I actually like sought a lot of help for it. And I've, you know, incorporated people in that were professionals, dietitians, uh, you know, even like a personal chef, I'm kind of bringing all this stuff into my, to try and like build more value in what I was presenting my clients. And it's like, I have this built in, uh, knowledge now that that's pretty crazy, but it's also to me, I just don't, I don't care enough about it personally, uh, to sit in the nuance of it and and discuss it all the time. It actually frustrates me that I don't care uh, (laughs) as much about it. It just drives me crazy and it's a struggle, but it also like, I know how to manipulate things personally and how, how to navigate through it. And the, the knowledge is there. The application of it has always been a bit of friction for me. Uh, mobility. So, and, and I'm, I'm dealing with this right now. So I do really well with, uh, giving myself a goal and, and getting really focused on that specific goal. Uh, and the last couple of years, a big part of that was mobility, right? I, I made a, a real conscious effort to say, okay, I'm going to get a deeper squat. I'm going to eliminate this back pain and hip pain that I'm dealing with. And, uh, I thought I did a great job, but I also completely just I, I knew in order to do that, I had to let go of strength goals, let go of how I looked. It's all about how I felt and moved. And and I had a lot of success with that. In the last, I would say, I don't know, eight months or so, maybe close to a year now, uh, I've transitioned back into, you know, building my aesthetic physique again. I'm, and I'm enjoying it. And I'm, you know, back to sending my wife naked photos again and stuff because I'm feeling myself, well, you know. So, really? hey. yeah, so I'm, Why I'm, you keep tagging me I'm, on I'm that. in that group yeah. for that too. Yeah. <laughs> keep sending it to us. So I'm, I'm, I'm back to feeling good like that. Yeah. I feel really good about uh, what I've done in the last eight months or so and, and uh, enjoying it. But what I also know is because I got so focused in that direction, I've laid off of the discipline that I had built the previous two years in doing my 90-90s in my combat. Now, what's cool is that in that time, I did build enough good habits that like I like I still have an incredibly deep squat. I showed a video of me still being able to do that barefoot, and I've made a lot of progress there. Um, but I, I've been battling with my uh, hip pain again, and I'm battling that because I know I'm not putting the work into my 90-90s like I should be. And you know, and I'm also focused on building a body right now more so than that. So what I struggle with and probably will always is, you know, knowing that it's all those things that I should be addressing. And I tend to do really well focused on one thing or another versus like being a little more balanced with my training. And so I'm there again, you know, with that, trying to balance myself out. And I I don't know if it'll ever end. I think this, the thing that's important and it's kind of to Justin's point is you know, like you, you is being aware, right? Being aware that that's your issue, and then just never allowing. Because what well, we were just talking to somebody are about talking about balance. How there's there's no such thing as like real balance. Like real balance is you you you're, you're focused in one area, then you shift your weight over to another area, and you shift your weight to another place. Like like the same way that you would ride a surfboard or a snowboard or skateboard, you're never you know perfectly balanced on the board. You're always kind of as life is changing, you're navigating right. a little left, a little right, like. And so I think that your pursuit and journey to be very healthy and fit and longevity is kind of like that. I don't know if you're, we're ever perfectly balanced. Sometimes one thing you're focused on a little more than another. And so, you know, that's definitely my challenge. I, I'm, I'm not as good on my mobility right now because I'm focused the other way. Yeah, I think it's, there's a mistake too when people uh, idolize their whatever, their coaches. Let's, let's just stick with fitness as like that's the ideal mm-hmm. and the problem with that is that they're they're human we're all human nobody is perfect um everybody has their challenges and there's a long way to fall when you put someone on that high of a pedestal I, i've seen people like you know like it's like that that trainer that fitness influencer and then someone sees them eating a burger and takes a picture and posts it and everybody's <laughs> like oh yeah he eats a burger too like well yeah i mean you know he's also human he also lives here just like the rest well, of us well not like, only that but they also are you know, you're you're normally idolizing them for like one aspect of their life, that, and you have no idea about right. how out of balance they probably are in other things. Just to my point, like you're never really that balanced. You're kind of, yeah. and if you like, 
you're so focused right now, your personal, you know, journey is I just want to get fit and shredded. And my coach is just the amazing physique and it comes so easy for him and this and that. But then what you might not realize is he's got a shit relationship with yeah. his wife and his kids and you have an amazing one because you prioritize that more than he does. So mm -hmm. yeah, be careful, like you say, of, of idolizing these coaches. Totally. But it's all hard. It's all hard. You're living in a world that you're surrounded by fast, easy, extremely tasty food. Life is inactive. It's designed that way. It's mm -hmm. not designed in, to be super physically demanding, which is a good thing. But of course, challenges uh, come with that. Um, we're, we're, we're brought up in this kind of world to value food for its taste. We're, we're taught to value you know, things for how they make us feel rather than how they may make improve our health. Um, so it's, it's a struggle you live yeah. in this. It's going to be tough. You have it's, to make conscious decisions every day. It's tough. And so we struggle with all the stuff uh, that we preach. Of course, we talked about the ones that we struggle the most with, but, um, we struggle with all of them. The difference is this is what we've made our career around. This is what we, we love to practice and train with the most. Mm -hmm. Um, and when we communicate, by the way, what you're hearing from us is, our experience, but mainly what you're hearing is uh, the clients that we've worked with and their experience. Because, you know, my experience is coming from a person who loves fitness and works in fitness. Probably not going to relate to you as much if you're the average person, but I can tell you a lot about what worked for people that I worked with right. who are very similar to you, who don't have any plans on working out six days a week, who probably realistically are only going to ever work out consistently two or three days a week, who have no desires to do what it takes to get a six pack, but want to be fit and healthy. They have no desire to eat perfectly, but they want to eat in a way that, you know, not only do they enjoy how they eat, but they also want to have longevity. And so that's what you'll hear us communicate all the time, but it's hard. It's, it's hard. And Hey, but that's a good thing. That's what makes it uh, meaningful. Look, if you like our information, you like our content, head over to mindpumpfree.com. We've got so many guides there that can help you. Um, and they cost nothing. They're all totally free. That's why it's called Mind Pump Free. Dot com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Self image is am I a person worthy of being taken care of? Am I a human worthy of some dignity, some respect? I have some good qualities to me. I'm not a bad person. Body image is just objective. I look in the mirror. I'm short. I'm tall. I'm hairy, bald, or I'm fat, or I'm overweight. Yeah. 